you're having nice weeks. Ooh, there's a cardinal. Oh, I love seeing cardinals in our backyard. It's Monday. Brian and I voted today in the primaries and it's six o'clock, which feels so weird because the sun is still so bright out. This is the good part of daylight savings. I do like having the sun stay out longer. I just put some finishing touches on my vlog. I had Brian watch through it. So this is gonna be uploaded on this Wednesday. And if you've all been watching my vlogs for the last couple weeks, you'll know I've just been a little bit overwhelmed and a little stressed. And I've gotten into this pattern of I'm waking up really early sometimes at like 4 30 a.m and i can't fall back asleep and i get up i have some time to myself before i have to start work but sometimes in my current pattern i'm having trouble relaxing even during that time and then when work ends i'm having trouble relaxing as well and then i fall asleep really really early sometimes at like 7 30 and then it's like time to start the whole process all over again the other thing i'm doing is that i've gotten into a pattern of people pleasing. Like I need a break. I need time to myself. I just keep saying yes to too many things, even like fun personal things, but those are starting to stress me out. Things that should be fun are becoming stressful, which is not okay. So I'm going to try this week to get a lot of alone time and some self-care in and try to reset and rewire my brain. <laughs> so I'm going to do that as many nights this week as possible. Tonight I'm going to take a bath and then I'm gonna take the switch up into the bedroom and I'm gonna play switch while listening to an audiobook. I'm gonna light some candles. Brian is going to play his own video game. So we're gonna like separate for the evening. But before we separate for the evening, we are going to order burritos because we voted today. So we're gonna treat ourselves. When you vote, you get to treat yourself to whatever you want. And for us, it's burritos. I'm in bed now. I'm on my Animal Crossing Island moon tube. While I was in the bathtub, I finished Princess Bride. It was great. I mean, it was just the abridged version, so it was really, really short, but I had a freaking blast. And then I went looking on my Goodreads at like my full TBR list and was looking for a new audiobook to listen to. So I went with a 10 hour long audiobook called Into the Heartless Woods. Darling Desi just had another spring book recommendation video come out and I watched it and put a lot of the books on my TBR list because so far her recs have been delivering big time. So I'm listening to In the, Into the Heartless Woods. I'll let you all know how it goes. And then I'm going to start my book of the month book, which is Listen to the Lie or Listen for the Lie. I can't remember. I'll start that tonight. I'm getting so sleepy though. It's not going to be too much longer. Happy first day of spring, everybody. It's freaking freezing and windy as hell. These are just words she can't pull out. Hi, same video from this weekend. Would you pull out a uh, baking sheet and line it with parchment paper? I started this book last night and I'm already over a third done with it. It's just one of those books, it hooks you. Lead me. Take your time. I'll be you guys, my high school boyfriend dumped me for Lindsay Lohan and I still remember exactly what he said word for word. He said, Meredith, I have thousands of crushes on thousands of girls, including Lindsay Lohan. A coworker recently brought her to my attention, which by the way, a coworker means other teenagers who worked at the pharmacy with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't stop thinking about her, and I don't think it's fair to stay with you when I'm thinking about Lindsay Lohan so much. That's what he said, that's how he dumped me. He Just a f He was doing you a favor. Brian, are you gonna divorce me for Did Lindsay Lohan? Yeah, if that's in the cards. Right. Lindsay, are you watching? Okay, maybe they'll give you what you want.
almost done with Listen for the Lie. I don't know if anybody else out there chose it for their book of the month book, but oh my God. After the Lindsay Lohan movie last night, I stayed up reading it till I fell asleep, woke up early, started reading it. This is gonna be a less than 48 hour read for me. Very, very tough to put it down. Just simple, easy to read, simple, super catchy storyline. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna work a little bit longer and then I'm gonna take a lunch break, eat some chickpea soup while reading this book. I just wanted to say that I love sitting here because I love looking this way. I think this part of the house is so pretty. Just look how pretty and perfect that is. I don't care, I got something that they need to see. Y'all, I've been seriously considering doing a little DNF on into the heartless woods. It's just not as fun as I'd hoped, but I am over halfway and I just bumped it up to 1.5 speed. Unfortunately, I do think it's because of the audiobook performance again. I hate to say it, but it's just a bit too much for me. So it's not been super fun. We'll see. I just got to a part in the book where the plot is really interesting. So I'm gonna see it through for my commute home and then I'll make a decision. But it would be my first DNF of the year, even though there have been a couple other books that I probably could have DNF'd. Wait, I lied earlier. This is not my first DNF of the year. Before Brian and I started the Expanse series, we tried Man in the High Castle because it's one of the like most prolific sci-fis or whatever. Anyway, we listened for about an hour and a half and decided that it was not for us. So we did DNF that one as well. Okay, bye. The water's getting too hot, getting too hot. The water's getting too hot, getting too hot, too hot. Washing out my mouth with souls. Praying for some oxygen. I just finished. Um, the wish game and I'm crying. Hey, but ah, my eye. So I loved wishing game in a lot of ways. At times I thought it was a little too, just a little too like sweet or cheesy. And the main character Lucy frustrated me at times. However, overall, I loved it in a lot of ways. It's like Willy Wonka, but instead of being a candy man, he's a children's author of like a children's series. And it made me think of all of these Animorphs books we have up here. In it, I think he had written like 64 little mini books. And that was just like so common in the 90s. We had all these like series. For Brian, it was Animorphs. For me, it was Beverly Cleary. And I had all the R.L. Stein books. That's what it made me think of. Just like really whimsical and fun. And Into the Heartless Wood has gotten more exciting plot wise. I kicked up that audiobook to 1.5 speed <laughs> and I think I am gonna finish it. I don't think it's the book's fault. I do think it's the narration's fault, which I feel bad about. I, I don't mean to be so mean about audiobook narrators, but it makes a big difference. <laughs> Since it's super snowy and cold out, I decided to take this opportunity to get back into my writing exercises for my book. I have not been super interested in thinking about my book over the last couple weeks. The last time I did this was March 7th, so that's like 15 days ago. And I was trying to do it every day in February. But I am such a seasonal person and I think of my book as being so specifically wintry. So then I've been trying to think of ways that I could continue these writing exercises through the different seasons. And since I have so many characters I need to develop, I figured I could do some 
seasonal character developments because remember there's a mystery involved in my book and everyone needs to be a suspect. That's hard. I developed what the mystery is, I developed what it looks like to solve the mystery, but now I have to have a bunch of suspects. How do people do this? Another reason why I picked this up is because I've only read two chapters of Flower Heart so far, but it's very immediately cottagecore witchy and my book is cottagecore witchy so it made me inspired and then tomorrow i have a baby shower in the morning and tomorrow night is the night i've been waiting for since last year it's our second time going to the annual houndstooth ball which is the rescue dog ball that i went to last year and it was like the best night of my life i'm so excited to be going back so i'm really glad i saved up my energy i just feel like i'm very much resetting and it's very good because i was overwhelmed by everything and now i feel so much calmer and i can celebrate turning a new leaf tomorrow. That is huge. I don't know. Almost to my friend's baby shower. I just wanted to say I finally finished Into the Heartless Wood this morning. Didn't really like it. Really dark, not fun. Audio book performance, not my favorite. Then I started, I think it's called The Other Bennett Sister. Another Desi recommendation and it is about Mary Bennett. So it's like an extension of Pride and Prejudice but Mary's point of view. Normally I'm not a huge fan of like Pride and Prejudice modern takes or kind of other authors versions of Pride and Prejudice. Do you know what I'm saying? However, this came highly recommended. It has really good reviews. I'm already three, like two, maybe even three hours in because I played a lot of video games this morning and then listened all while I like showered and while I drove down here. Anyway, it's really fun already. Oh, there's a cute dog. All right, that's all. It's about the bike. Just got back from the baby shower. I'm just gonna lay here for a little bit, maybe read a little, and then it's time to get ready for the gala. to the outfit I wore last year, but I don't care.
I spent $4,000 on something, and the second I stood up, I was like, no. And then someone else spent $4,100, and they got it. I was $100 away from spending $4,000 on something. But it would have been for all of us, because if it's an eight, it yes. eight people vacation for a week. That's a steal. But I'm still, I'm like shaking, and my heart hurts, and I'm, I feel lightheaded. <laughs> So we we wouldn't have chipped in. We're already going. <laughs> we're already going on vacation for a week later this year. Wait, this is future me popping in. I'm editing this video, but I need to just really quick tell you, you gotta go to the One Tail at a Time Instagram to see Sugar Snap's story. If you follow them, then you know, but Sugar Snap has been the most amazing story. So we were all freaking out that Sugar Snap showed up last night. I just can't believe it's such a beautiful story. Sugar Snap was almost dead, but he's gonna be okay. It's so sweet. Okay, that's all, that's all. <laughs> Folks, we are going to do this drawing just moments from now. Level, even if it falls outside of the tiers that I named, you can do so directly from your phone. Our entire team is here to support you if you prefer to give a different way. She never wants me to go away. Just to stay She never wants to be left lying See? Oh my god, you made a leaf! Good morning, everybody. Last night was so special. It really is the best event. If anybody wants to come next year, it's the Hound's Tooth Ball. It's truly worth every penny. It's kind of expensive. You have to pay $200 to go, but that money is going to rescue dogs. So consider it like, it's like you're buying yourself a nice dinner and a nice night out, and you're making your yearly contribution to 
rescue animals. Highlights of the night included running into Jack, the dog who sat with us last year. And also in the bathroom, I ran into our dog trainer, the woman who came in and changed our lives. We had three sessions with her and then we did her six week reactivity course, which anyone can take by the way. So if you have a reactive dog, it's all virtual. She's Megan at Capricorn Dogs. But anyway, I ran into her in the bathroom. She totally remembered me and Luna. She was asking about Luna's mouthiness and all this stuff. And it was just so amazing to see her again. And then I got to see Alyssa see her, which was so exciting because she also was Alyssa's trainer with Dolly, but they never met in real life. It was all virtual because it was in the pandemic. That was really beautiful. I'm sitting here with Brian's sourdough bread with some blueberry jam on it. It's his best loaf yet by far. It's so fucking good. I've got Flower Heart. I'm thoroughly enjoying this book. It's easy and it's cozy and it's cottage core. I just like it a lot. It's perfect for me right now. And then I'm loving the audiobook, The Other Bennett Sister. This has been a perfect reset. Brian's about to go to the movies with Clark, so I'm gonna have even more time to myself. I'm really gonna enjoy it just like being cozy in my slanket. I think adding a little bit of intention to my reset week was just what I needed because even last week when I was reading and like getting cozy and stuff, I don't think I had like the right intention behind it. I didn't like intentionally say like, you need to reset yourself and calm down. This was a perfect week. I highly recommend it if you need one so you don't burn out. And then I'm gonna edit this video tonight. I love y'all. See you soon.